And I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. And now, transcribed for the Signal Oil Company, the Whistler's strange story, The Murder of Byron Blake. <laughs> It was well past the lunch hour, and the little restaurant on 56th Street was almost deserted, except for the corner table near the window, where Julie Lang and Gus Hackett sat talking over their coffee cups. Julie? Yes? Better eat something. You didn't touch your lunch. I... I don't feel like eating. Oh. I could use a cigarette. Oh, sure, sure. Here you are. Thanks. Feel any better? I guess so. I... Oh, you do understand, Gus. I... I'm sorry oh, to be... Of course I understand, darling. I don't feel much like talking. I... I just want to be quiet and think a little. <laughs> Sitting in the little restaurant, Julie Lang had a lot to think about. She was grateful for its quiet, a kind of sanctuary in the middle of a mass of howling headlines and hammering police officials. For although the current furor concerned Leo Sanders, Julie had been in the very center of the situation since that moment when Leo Sanders unexpectedly ended her life two months ago at a party. The party was just beginning to warm up when you got there, wasn't it, Leo? A New York party with all the trimmings. The penthouse, the theater crowd, the talented youngster from the New Review doing impersonations near the piano. You carefully adjust your tie in the ante room just before you go in. Decide once again that no one can look more prosperous than an actor who's out of work. You open the door and run right into Julie. Julie! Julie Langmire, let me look at you. I'm a nightclub singer now. Left the Langmire back in St. Louis. Oh, really? Well, what is it? Lang, Julie Lang. What are you doing in New York? I'm beating the pavement, looking for a job. Theater? What else? Any luck? Oh, had to get me a secretary. Keep her busy day and night, just turning down office. <laughs> you couldn't let me have two bits for coffee and sinkers, could you? Oh, Leo. <laughs> you haven't changed a bit. Not since... Not since St. Louis. Yeah, St. Louis. Uh, uh, who are you here with? Gus Hackett. Who? Gus Hackett, the agent. You mean the Gus Hackett? Why not? Oh, Julie, darling, you've suddenly become the most glamorous woman I ever met in my life. <laughs> Shall we adjourn to the terrace? Uh, please, Leo, not right now. Oh, no. come on. Come on, I just want to talk over old times. That's just it. That's all behind us now, Leo. I'm afraid I'll, I'll have to carry you out there bodily. There no other answer. All right, Leo. <laughs> but just for a minute, hmm? Really, Leo, I'd better go back to the party now. Gus is probably wondering where I am. That's no and... reason at all. You know... You're afraid of me, aren't you, Julie? Yes. I suppose I am. Why? Is it important? Very important. I... 
I don't want it to happen again, Leo. St. Louis? Yes, St. Louis. I found a new life for myself. New friends. Julie, you still love me. Why don't you admit it? I don't know, Leo. I... It's so confusing. You're coming back this way. I... It can be just the way it was. Darling, I'm different now. I've learned. I've learned a lot. You can help me, you know. Hackett's the biggest agent in the business. If you could get him behind me, I... Well, there's no end to what we could do together. We'd go right to the top. It's not just that. There's something else, Leo. I... I don't want to talk about it now. Julie. Oh, oh, Gus, I, I want you to meet an old friend. This is Leo Sanders. Leo, this is Gus Hackett, my agent. Hello, how are you? Leo and I knew each other in St. Louis. Oh, I see. Julie, Pat Hoffman's arriving. Pat? But he told me... Yeah, yeah, you'd better run out and say the right things. Go on now, hurry. Excuse me, Leo. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Sanders. I suppose she told you about Pat Hoffman. Well, she started to say something. Queer guy. He runs the nightclub where she works. Decided he's going to marry her. I see. No, I'm afraid you don't. You've uh, known her for a long time. Oh, I went to high school with her. We went around together when I first started out. uh, On the stage. Oh. Oh, you're an actor. Yes. As a matter of fact, I've been trying to make an appointment with you for a month. Mm. Finished a nice run with Fallen Star on the road. Sanders, do you mind if we don't talk business tonight? I... I guess I've got the jitters or something. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. Oh, sure, sure. It's all right. I told her again and again about that Hoffman character. I don't know where it's going to end up. Oh, is it that bad? No, worse. Look, I'll talk to Julie about you. She says you're okay. It's great with me. Maybe we can work out something. That's all I can say right now. But Gus Hackett said enough, didn't he, Leo? A word to Hackett from Julie and the door is open. And in that brief moment on the terrace, you could see that nothing had changed with her. That it was still just as it was in St. Louis. That's why you drop into a florist shop the next evening. Yes, sir? I'll take a dozen of those American Beauty roses, the uh, the ones in the window. All right, sir. And uh, send them to Julie Lang at the Parakeet Club on West 58th Street. You want to include a card? No. No, I'll deliver the message myself. Hello, Julie. Leo, what are you... Did you get my flowers? I... I didn't know they were yours. They're lovely, Leo, but you should... What's the matter, darling? Something wrong? You shouldn't have come here, Leo. Well, why not? The show's over. Can't a guy come backstage and see his girl in her dressing room once in a while? I can't explain now. Please go. I I can see you afterwards. Oh, come on. That's no way to act to me. Come Leo. Don't lie to me, Julie. It's still the same, isn't it? Just like it used to be. I... I don't know, Leo. Julie, Julie, darling. Please go now. I'll meet you somewhere afterwards. Got to understand, darling. I... Julie. Who's that? Shh. I, I'm not quite ready, Pat. Just a minute. Hurry it up. Behind that screen over there. Hey, what kind Please, of... Please, darling. Yeah, but this is stupid. You're of age. Will you can... do as I say? All right, Julie. Yes, Pat? What is it? I just want to tell you it's all set. What's all set? Tomorrow night. I'll arrange for Lorraine to do your spot so you and I can take the night off. Hey, wait a minute. What's this? Oh, the flowers? I, I meant to tell you. Who's sending you flowers? He's just a friend, Pat. You didn't answer my question, Julie. Who is he? I don't think it's any of your business. If Talk I to was... me that. I'm tired of it, Julie. I told you before I wasn't going to take any more. All right, Pat. You don't have to take any more. I don't need this job. I don't need you. I'm not a child, Pat. You have Shut no up. right... And get this, Julie. You're staying here with me whether you want it or not. And you can tell your friend if he makes another pass at you, I'll kill him. That's all. I'll get into your things. I'll have the car ready for you in 15 minutes. Oh, Leo. Yeah, yeah, I see what you mean. That Hoffman's a nice guy, isn't he? Why don't you walk out? I'm afraid. 
afraid of him, Leo. He'd do anything. Well, what about us? Oh, I don't know. You love me, Julie. It's going to mean everything to both of us once I'm set. But, Leo, I... You've got to fix me up with Gus Hackett. All right, Leo. I'll call him. I'll make an appointment for you. <laughs> When you leave, Julie, you walk rapidly towards your apartment. After two blocks, you have a vague feeling someone is following you. You look around quickly. About half a block behind you, gaining on you, is Hoffman. You're not anxious for him to know where you live or who you are, are you, Leo? Quickly, you enter the revolving doors of a hotel. Hurry through the crowd in the lobby. Exit through the side door. Outside once more, you look both ways. Make certain you've given Hoffman the slip. Then start walking rapidly to your apartment. Once you reach your apartment, you dial Julie's private phone at the club. Hello, Julie. Leo. I'm just leaving, Leo. I told you Your tough boyfriend followed me after I left the club. Leo, no. Yes, but he didn't catch up with me. I lost him in a hotel lobby. Are you sure? Sure, I'm sure. Oh, I hope so, Leo. If he thought there was anything between us, he'd kill you. Not if I saw him first. Don't worry. I'll take care of myself. has asked me to explain to you why tonight's Whistler and last Sunday's Whistler were transcribed. This was done, friends, in order to give all the members of the Whistler's cast, orchestra, and production staff a well-deserved two-week vacation with pay. I'm sure you'll be glad to know, however, that although this is the season when so many popular shows go off the air for the summer, there'll be no vacation for the Whistler program itself. Thanks to your loyalty to the Whistler which has made this the most popular West Coast program in radio history, plus your loyalty to Signal Dealers, year in Signal history, Signal Oil Company is keeping the Whistler on the air all summer without interruption. So each Sunday evening throughout the summer, when you turn to this spot on your radio dial, you can depend on finding your favorite mystery. Just as each time you turn into a Signal station, you can depend on finding a friendly, independent dealer to serve you with fine, quality signal products, including the famous go-farther gasoline. Aren't you, Leo? Pat Hoffman's threat that he'd kill anyone he caught hanging around Julie Lang didn't mean much to you until he started following you after you left Julie's dressing room. Once you lost him in the crowd, you made a note to watch out for him in the future. Besides, finding Julie again has given you an inside track with Gus Hackett, the actor's agent. And you'll do anything to get a break in the theater, won't you, Leo? Anything. A few days later, you enter Gus Hackett's office to keep the appointment she arranged. Hello, it's certainly nice of you to see me, Mr. Hackett. I, uh... Hello, Sanders. Sit down. All right. Tell me about yourself. Oh, well, I started in stock in St. Louis. Went on the road with the, uh, second company of Pretty Boy. I had 16 weeks of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, then, of course, there was the usual summer theater work, and, uh... I brought along some clippings. Oh, (laughs) Good. Yeah, but really, there's one review I'm I'm pretty proud of. A guy in Seattle thought I did all right with the lead in Primrose. Mm-hmm. A standout performance by a bright young newcomer, Leo Sanders, was well received by an otherwise restless audience. Sanders showed strong presence and a genuine understanding of Mr. Carter's principal character. Hmm? Okay. Yeah, well, of course, that's all... Bush League stuff to you, Mr. Everybody Hackett. Everybody I... asked to start someplace, Sanders. Yeah. Don't let it worry you. 
As a matter of fact, the thing I have in mind calls for an unknown. Oh? Yes. It's Mel Franklin's new play. You'll be casting in about a week. Mel Franklin? Oh, that'd be quite a break. From what he told me about it, there's a good chance you might be what he's looking for. Well, of course, Mr. Hackett, you know I've I've only done lead. I'm talking about the lead. Yeah, well, it's a little hard to believe that Franklin would take a chance on an unknown. Well, Mel has quite a few ideas about the part. Above all, he wants someone who isn't identified with any other characterization. I see. It's that kind of a part. Uh-huh. The play might suffer if the audience associated the actor with the wrong kind of thing. Which uh, brings up something else, Sanders. What do you mean? Your background. There were a few clippings you didn't save, right? Now, wait a minute. I... Mr. Hackett, has Julie been telling Julie you Julie hasn't about... been telling me anything. Except how competent you are. Uh-huh. No, Sanders, I found these things out of my own hook. The practice of mine in taking on a new client. And uh, just what have you found out? <laughs> well, let's say it wasn't entirely breaks that have held you back. I understand you got out of hand a few times. Oh, it's never anything serious, Mr. Hackett. That I... hit and run charge in Duluth was serious enough. You served time for it. Well, yes, but... And there are at least half a dozen times in the Midwest where you've been in one kind of trouble or another. That temperament routine doesn't go anymore, you know. All right, Mr. Hackett. I don't see what that has to do with anything. In this case, everything. I just want us to understand one another, that's all. Now, in dealing with Franklin, I'll do the talking. I understand, Mr. Hackett. Well, I appreciate this even more. Don't thank me. Thank Julie Lang. I intend to. She's a wonderful girl, Sanders. I... I guess I'd do almost anything for her. I understand, Mr. Hackett. I hope you do. She's very fond of you, you know. I wouldn't want to see her hurt. Of course not. All right, Sanders. I'll arrange that tryout. Be at the 56th Street Theater at 10 tomorrow morning. That's all there is to it, Leo. It took Julie five minutes to do what you failed to accomplish in three months. You know how important she is now. That as long as she believes you're in love with her, anything is possible. You arrive at the theater as instructed by Gus. Sit by yourself in the wings, studying the play script that Franklin placed in your hand. Not long after, Gus arrives. And you see him join Franklin in the empty seats beyond the footlights. Then at last, you're asked to read opposite the leading lady. Think for a minute, Marion. I don't want to hurt you. I don't want to hurt your father. But please, consider my position. Oh, darling, you're taking it too seriously. Too seriously. Mary and those people are counting on me. You don't quite lose yourself in the part, do you, Leo? No, you do your best. But all the while you're reading, you can see the dim outlines of Gus and Mel Franklin beyond the footlights. And you wish you could hear what they're saying. Well, what do you think of it, Mel? The guy's good, Gus. Is he in? I don't know, I... I had another actor in mind, and I'd still like to listen to him. But it's between him and Sanders? Yes, yes, I think I can promise you that much. Ah, good enough. Except that I think Sanders is right. Sure, sure, he's doing a good job, only... Well, Gus, I've heard things about him. I understand Oh, that's all in the past, Mel. Yes, but this party has to be a clean-cut guy or the thing will fall on his face. <laughs> I wouldn't worry. Listen to him, Mel. He's really an actor. Listen. I'm sorry, Mary. But that's something I can't believe anymore. I'm sorry, too. I've done everything I can. Not... You may have something, Gus. Let me think it over. Okay. But you've got a chance at a hit on this one, Mel. Don't let a few rumors spoil it for you. Well, how'd it go, Mr. Hackett? Did Mel Franklin say anything? It looks good, Leo. Oh, yeah, but what'd he say? <laughs> By the way, I hope you told him I wasn't at my best. That's all. It was a first reading, relax, and you know... Relax, relax. Huh? I told him just enough. And I still want you to stay away from him. Give him time to make up his mind. Make up his mind? You mean he... He think... mentioned having somebody else he wanted to hear. Oh. But just do as I say, and it's going to work out. I'm sure of it. Oh, I hope you're right, Mr. Hackett. I, 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 I couldn't miss with a part like this. Yes, yes, I know. But all we can do now is wait and see. Look, I've got to make a quick trip out to Hollywood. Yeah, but what about the part? Just sit tight. 
I'll be in touch with Mel, and if anything breaks, I'll call Julie. Oh, okay. And another thing, Leo. Be a good boy, will you? You never dreamed it could happen so fast, did you, Leo? Yes, in a matter of days now, you'll know one way or the other. The waiting isn't easy, but Gus Hackett seems so confident, so sure. It's three nights later that you pick up the kind of a rumor you've been waiting for and hurry to Julie's apartment. Leah. Oh, good. You got your radio on. What time is it, honey? Almost seven. Yeah, just in time. Craig Wallace is you in the air now. Oh? I just heard he might have a tip on the cast of Franklin's play. Oh, how would he know? Well... Yeah, he, he's supposed to be an old pal of Mel Franklin's. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, here gentlemen. he is. Let's see what this he has to say. This is your New huh? York reporter, Craig Wallace, bringing you bits of show news picked up along Broadway. First off, I can confirm those rumors that have been flying concerning a split-up between actress Sandra Laverne and producer Buzz Foster. Sandra starts a new show to help her forget. And on the subject of new shows, I promise to have something about the stars of Mel Franklin's latest opening. Here it is, here it is. Listen. Mel has picked a newcomer this time for the leading role opposite Broadway's own Vivian Marks. Needless to say, he'll probably be around for a long time. When Mel Franklin picks him, they're usually nothing short of sensational. And so, Mr. and Mrs. Manhattan, here it is. The man who will play the lead in Mel Franklin's new play is Byron Blake. What? Oh, wait, Leo, don't turn it off. Why not? You want to watch me squirm? Leo, please, there must be something. Give it, Julie. I didn't get the part. It's all over. Wait, Leo. Yes, Leo, it's all over. You tell that to yourself again and again as you leave Julie and aimlessly walk the street. It's even worse now than before you ran into her at that party. Coming so close, having a dream in the palm of your hand. Then watching it vanish in a casual remark from a radio commentator. Yes? There are only two of you, Leo. And tomorrow they'll all tell you it was close. That it was a hard choice between you and this Byron Blake. And you'll smile politely and say, thanks anyway. And step back to where you were three months ago when you first came to New York. An hour later, you find yourself standing in front of a florist shop, looking at a basket of American Beauty roses in the window. Vaguely remember it's the place you stopped a week ago and bought the roses for Julie. The night Pat Hoffman said he'd kill the man who sent them. Suddenly you find yourself tense, your mind going a mile a minute. Uh, just a minute, please. Uh, sorry, mister, closing up. Yeah, but I want, I want to buy some flowers. Too some... late, buddy. She'll have to wait till tomorrow. Now, look, I've got to have them, those roses. I want two dozen. Two dozen American beauties? Yeah. Well, <laughs> never too late to make a sale like that. Come on inside. Have you got two dozen? Oh, sure, sure. Now, what about delivery? It, there's ten bucks in it if you deliver them tonight. I guess I could take care of it on my way home. Oh, fine. I want you to take them to the parakeet club. I know the spot. See that Pat Hoffman, the manager, gets them. He'll know who they're for. Okay, now what about a card? Yes. Yes, I want a card on them. Just put, to Julie, with all my love. And sign it, Byron Blake. Where shall we eat? Where shall we spend the night? Those are two questions you'll be asking again and again if you do any traveling this summer. Well, to help you find happy answers to these questions, signal dealers are offering free a guidebook to selected eating and lodging places. Called Lane's Guide, this handy booklet is packed with useful information. It tells, for instance, whether the lodging place is on a beach or has a swimming pool. In the case of motels, it states whether kitchens are available. And so that you can keep within your budget, it shows whether prices are low, medium, or high. Naturally, no pocket-sized publication could possibly contain every good eating and lodging place. But Lane's Guide, which is prepared by an independent travel organization includes a representative selection in hundreds of cities and towns. We sincerely hope you'll enjoy this latest step in Signal Oil Company's continuing efforts to make your motoring miles more pleasant. Remember, a copy of Lane's Guide to Eating and Lodging Places is yours free while the supply lasts 
at any signal service station. Yes, it was well past the lunch hour, and Julie Lang and Gus Hackett sat discussing the murder of Byron Blake, scanning the headlines of the sensational story. A story of the theater, a murder story in which Julie had unwittingly played a dramatic part. The first shock was over now as Julie and Gus sat in that little restaurant on 56th Street. While on the streets outside, the newsboys announced the fact that the killer had pled guilty and had thrown himself on the mercy of the court. death penalty for killer of Byron Blake. Extra Byron Blake killer faces maximum session. Read all about You know something, Gus? Hmm? Somehow I knew all along that we'd end up this way. Just you and I. Yeah. I... I guess I don't have to tell you how I feel. Mm -hmm. I've always known. It just makes me wonder sometimes. You were once in love with Leo Sanders, weren't you? No. I thought it was love, Gus. I know now it was something else. Why didn't you tell them everything? The police? Yeah. <laughs> the papers are calling it a tragedy. But Leo was a heel, Julie. Worse than that, he was a murderer. When he signed the name Byron Blake to those roses he sent you, he knew exactly what Hoffman would do. That's what's so wrong about it. Hoffman wasn't the real murderer. He was actually the weapon. Oh, please. I gotta get it off my chest, Julie. I guess I feel guilty in a way. It wasn't your fault. I know. But it never would have happened if Mel Franklin and I hadn't dreamed up that way of covering Leo's past. You mustn't blame yourself, Gus. Maybe not. But it's too bad Leo didn't know that the stage name we dreamed up for him was Byron Blake. Whistle be your signal for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler, each Sunday night at this same time. Meantime, Signal Oil Company and the friendly independent dealers who help you go farther with Signal gasoline hope you'll remember. Regardless of what gasoline you use, you'll enjoy more miles of happy driving if you drive at sensible speeds, obey traffic regulations, and avoid taking chances. You may even save a life, possibly your own. <laughs> Featured in tonight's story were Bill Foreman, Gerald Moore, Doris Singleton, Barney Phillips, John Stevenson, and Bob Bruce. The Whistler was produced and directed by George W. Allen with story by Gene Fromhers, music by Wilbur Hatch, and was transcribed and transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. The Whistler is entirely fictional, and all characters portrayed on The Whistler are also fictional. Any similarity of names or resemblance to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. Remember to tune in at this same time next Sunday when the Signal Oil Company will bring you another strange story by The Whistler. This is Marvin Miller speaking for the Signal Oil Company. Stay tuned now for our Miss Brooks starring Eve Arden, which follows immediately over most of these stations. CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.